about it. But the company itself was one that I, when I, as I've read about the history, and none of us, none of the family members have been involved in the running of the company for several generations. And our stock ownership is so minuscule that we have no financial leverage as such over the company. But we do have a little bit of kind of public leverage because if a bunch of us come forward as the, the members of the legacy family um, against one of their policies, it's embarrassing for them. So we've been able to have some success in, in coercing them to reduce um, pollution and especially to, to uh, eliminate animal testing. We've gotten them to eliminate over 90% of what they were doing. Uh, we're, we're working on the, the last five to 10% of that. And we continue to do what we can. I wish we could do more. Uh, I'm no longer proud of that company. I don't use any of their products except an occasional uh, razor blade. They've been unwilling to go into organic uh, foods. And, and um, you know, when, when, when they cooperate with Monsanto, when they create a RFID chips, um, when Dick Cheney goes on the board in, in the 90s, you know, for me, that was the indication, of, okay, they really have, unfortunately, given their size, um, they have become uh, at least to some degree a part of the military industrial complex, which is so dangerous um, right now. So uh, I, I don't uh, have any uh, hesitation about exposing any uh, violations that, that they create. And I, I reach out uh, to other members of legacy families to do everything we can in our generations to uh, turn those giant ships away from the kind of of centralized control and, and inappropriate violating behavior that a lot of them do, uh, and either you know get rid of them or turn them so that they're actually really uh, serving people and the planet in a healthy way. Yeah, and I, I think I want to add, I, I think one of the things that we feel is that individuals should be prosecuted for the decisions that they make and not be able to hide behind the, the corporate personhood. So you know, inquiry needs to be made. And we can tell, I mean, clearly Procter & Gamble's involved in some horrible stuff and the individuals responsible for those decisions, I think, we think should be prosecuted. So, you know, that's part of the whole move here is that uh, there needs to be some accountability as their structures come down and um, the people reemerge, which I'm confident will happen. And one of the ways I think is to get this corporate personhood thing out of the way so that the people are actually accountable for the decisions they make and including investors in those companies. If that's what their money's doing, then there should be accountability there too. Right. Yeah, let me mention one more aspect of that because in our solutions process, our, our model, it's not just a useful structure, but the other half of it is it, it needs to be based on healthy principles. And the key principle that we have, that we base all of our solutions on is the principle of non-aggression, of the honoring of each person's uh, property, uh, safety, uh, and privacy. So when, uh, when these companies are doing bad things, not only do they need to be prosecuted, but we can employ the same thing that Gandhi uh, and King did with nonviolent non-participation. We can refuse to, to buy from these companies. We can refuse to invest in these companies. We can protest against these companies. And we can divest from other companies or organizations or universities or whatever that also, that also invest them in the same way that, that, in, that divestment was so critical to, to getting rid of apartheid, at least to what degree it has been in, in South Africa. The same thing can be true for the multinational corporations and the banks in America and you know, across the developed world. Right. And obviously, this was never just about Procter & Gamble. The real problem is that all these major companies have more or less combined into one larger entity. And what I really see is the big problem is the Rockefeller Foundation or the Gates Foundation saying, everybody pool your money with us. We have the answers. But their answers are, are the harmful GMOs and very questionable, definitely dangerous vaccinations. And that's not the path forward. Uh, I do appreciate all the questions you put forward in Thrive. Let me bring this up, too, because uh, the environmental component is something we do want, quote, sustainable energy. At the same time, you've got the world government level, the United Nations and what have you, uh, also addressing those questions. And they've got a real Trojan horse where they want to use the global commons to get a greater power, uh, something that we all are interested in solving, but not the same solution. 
Yeah, that's a really critical distinction. I'm glad that you brought that one up, Aaron, because uh, I know a, a lot of my friends uh, who are who care deeply about the environment and have been very uh, active uh, for years uh, have been being severely duped, as I used to be, to think that the that the Copenhagen conference, for instance, was really about saving the environment rather than a Trojan horse in order to create. Uh, a global tax and a global government and a global police force to, in fact, control everybody through the control of carbon. And it's the same thing with, with the, you know, a lot of people are still being fooled, including here in Santa Cruz, by programs like Agenda 21, where they, they learn to use all the right words like, you know, uh, equality and sustainability uh, and enduring systems and all that, that type of thing. But really, if you look at it under the guise of that, they're stretching the tentacles of the one world government and the super state structure right down into your local communities and taking over uh, your, uh, your environment, your water, the, the, the air, the local systems, the local governments and so forth under the guise of uh, taking care of the environment. And we really need to wake up and make a more mature and discerned uh, distinction there before it's too late. Yeah, and I think it's important to reclaim a lot of that language for ourselves rather than abdicate because they've mm -hmm. usurped it. I mean, they had the Clean Air Act, you know. I remember, you know, in our choice of in making Thrive, talking about love was like, geez, can we do that? You know, it's like, wait a minute, what happened here? You know, how is it there, there are these words, whether they have to do with sustainability or clean air or basic human goodness and the capacity that we have to love and care for each other, you know, suddenly those become, you know, risque things to talk about or we're going to be misunderstood instead of let's reclaim this and say, yes, we're absolutely for sustainability of a conscious, aware um, nature that in that is based in individual um, freedom. Right. And so I guess my final question would be this in two parts. A, which free technology energies are the most promising? I've read a lot on these inventors. Uh, we get emails about it constantly. I know people out there have looked into this. What's going to be at our homes, on our individual properties in the coming future? The second part is you could have, you know, theoretically the spaceship with the future civilization and all the answers on board. The problem is I don't see my ticket onto that system because there's effectively a scientific dictatorship in place and those seats have already been reserved by people who think they own the future. Yeah, they, uh, first of all, in terms of the devices, um, there's a man named Sterling Allen who runs a website uh, called PES Wiki, P-E-S, Pure Energy Systems Wiki. And uh, they really stay on top of what's emerging, at least publicly. There are, there are tons of private, you know, secret labs, because unfortunately there still have to be, where they're not going public until they're, they're really ready. But uh, Sterling does a great job of keeping his top five list up to date. And he just got back from South Africa, uh, inspecting a technology over there that might be released, he said, in early March. So, so it literally could be in the, in the next few weeks. Uh, a very exciting technology that, that could be coming to market uh, right away. Uh, there's another one that people are hearing about, the Rossi ECAT device, which is a cold fusion device um, that seems to be holding a lot of promise. I, I haven't heard anything for a few weeks now, but I, I'm watching that one pretty closely. Uh, John, John Bedini has got uh, amazing magnetic motors and radiant energy devices. Um, and I know that he could come out with over unity devices if he was allowed to and, uh, and because he had them many years ago. Currently, he doesn't market any over unity devices because he, he was told he couldn't. But keep an eye on PESWiki and that, that'll uh, keep you up to date on, on what's surfacing in the public domain. That's PES Wiki, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and also we do updates at thrivemovement.com, and um, there's a lot that you can check out there under the whole uh, free energy solutions. Yeah, and then in relation to the scientific dictatorship, I think this is a really key point as well, because uh, first of all, technology can really help raise our lifestyle. Technologies like the computers and, and networks that we're speaking over right now is helping us get informed and, and get organized uh, like never before. But on the other hand, the technology itself is never going to develop our consciousness for us. It's not going to 
Uh, we can't turn management or, of humanity over to, to computers or to any uh, organization. I think that your point is really critical because as we go forward, we're absolutely convinced that unless it's on the basis of honoring the sovereignty of every single individual uh, equally, um, then we're not going to make it, even as a species, because as soon as the seeds of tyranny are sown by giving a few people a monopoly over force and monopoly over money, it leads to tyranny every time. And now with the weaponry that is uh, available, it, even it, uh, if we could muster even a, a violent revolution, I'm not suggesting it, but if it came to that in, in our own self-defense, uh, it would be disastrous for the planet right now. So. Uh, to the degree to which we can emerge healthy systems now based on the freedom of each individual uh, and the communication systems that we've got now, I think we've got a really good shot, but we can't turn it over to some sort of uh, elite scientific dictatorship, right, as you say. Right. Yeah, and I don't want to leave this planet. <laughs> <laughs> And I am not willing to give that one up. I'll, I'll definitely stay. And I think this power of nonviolent non-participation is, is something that, you know, we saw with Gandhi and we've seen with King. And I think that's really what's emerging here is people are getting informed and realizing that, you know, this pyramid structure of domination and control, while people are at the bottom of it now, you know, impacted completely with all of the uh, effects of it, it also means it relies on us participating. That's That's where the true power is in the people and i and i i have a lot of confidence that we're going to be able to stay on this planet and uh, come up with the solutions that we need and we do our best to put those out at thrivemovement.com and appreciate the work that you're mm -hmm. doing and so many others and yeah truly self-governance has rarely been tried at all i uh, appreciate y'all joining us appreciate raising those big questions in the context of identifying the new world order system and the real problems we face and so I think everybody does need to see the film and join the conversation and follow it at your website, thrive.org, right? Thrive Movement. Thrive Movement. Thrive Movement. Thrive Movement .com. And then you have, you have uh, the DVD available at InfoWars as well as through our website. That's right. We have it at InfoWars. Kimberly Carter Gamble and Foster Gamble, thank you for joining us. It was thank a pleasure you. talking to you. You're welcome. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. And that's it for the InfoWars Nightly News. We'll be back again tomorrow. Stay tuned and help support our broadcast. Consider subscribing and don't forget to check out the new documentary, New World Order, Blueprint of Mad Men. Thanks.